Hello, welcome to Desus Talks. Desus Talks is a production uh, brought to you by Desus and the Queens community, specifically the dance school community. My name is Serena Fursley. I'm going into my fourth year of my BMUS, and I'm actually a soprano at the School of Dance School. My position on the Desus committee is actually the Vice President of Student Affairs. And I'm Hamish, so I'm a fourth year student. I am the Vice President of Operations on Desus, and I am technically at least partially a drum student. I'm what we call a medial, which is when you're in first year and really indecisive, so you don't just choose one major, you instead choose two things. So technically I'm drum and politics, but for the purpose of this, I'm a drum student. Um, hello, I'm Sarah. I'm going to be in third year in the fall. My program is music and I play the flute. Um, on DSUS, I am the newsletter editor. And howdy, I'm Hannah. Uh, I'm a fourth year Bachelor of Music student and I major on the saxophone. I'm a student guest this week, but uh, fourth years, keep an eye out whenever your rep hiring comes up because you're going to want to vote for me. <laughs> yes, great, Hannah. Thank you for bringing up your reps. Uh, just really quick to share with you guys. We do have uh, every year different elections for the first year reps, second year reps, third year reps, and fourth year reps, as Hannah has already described. Please apply. It would be great to have, you know, lots of people to participate. Um, it allows you to be part of your community and you get to work with me on all year long. Hopefully that's appeal. Like that's a good appeal, but maybe not. We'll see. Also just a really nice way to meet a lot of people because it means that not only do you get to meet a lot of people in your year and get to talk with them and find out all the things that are happening in dance school that way, you also end up meeting a bunch of people on Desus and getting to meet a bunch of people in different years and getting to connect with them that way. So it's a really great way to uh, meet new people, find out lots of different things that are happening in the dance school. It's a fun time. Check it out. Okay, uh, so now that everyone has introduced themselves, uh, I think we want to take a little trip down memory lane and talk about uh, some of our favorite memories or, you know, things that we experienced in first year. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and start and I want to talk about um, the Ensemble Auditions Day. Um, <laughs> honestly, this was... Yeah, it was a good time. I remember feeling so nervous walking all the way from HLH to the Isabel with two of my newest best friends. Um, so, you know, flute major and two clarinet majors walking there. I actually spent the whole day um, saying that I wasn't going to audition because I was so nervous. I was like, I don't need to do ensembles like Marty and flute choir, which you don't need to audition for. So I was like, I'm good. I don't need to do wind or orchestra, um, but, um, you know, those clarinet majors did convince me to, to go through with the audition, um, and man, let me tell you, it was so awkward being in that rehearsal hall with three people, you know, I was sitting across the room from these two profs that I had, like, that I didn't know at all. Um, and they asked me to play the hardest excerpt ever. Like, yeah, and it, it was it was a good time. I was like, I'm horrible, I'm horrible. But, you know, I ended up in the first row in Wind Ensemble, which is a pretty good placement for a first year. Um, so you don't need to be too nervous about that if you're a first year out there who is nervous for that. Yeah. Um, who wants to go next? Uh, I can go next. Um, one of my favorite memories from first year, from all all years in the pro in the bachelor music program, is playing in studio. Uh, it's a really great opportunity to get some really awesome feedback from your area coordinators and or your private lesson instructors, um, and also from your peers. There's uh, there's students from you know first year to fourth year in studio, and everybody's got something everybody's got something nice to say and everybody's also got something that's gonna help you in the future and it also playing in studio really helps you get over your 
any performance jitters that you may have, which is very important for me. Um, and it's also just a really great way to get to know other people that play the same instrument as you or play instruments that are in the same family as your instrument. All in. <clears throat> um, I, thinking back to first year, the man kind of connecting to Sarah ensembles. I was in choral ensemble and it was a great time. You know, just the atmosphere of singing with people is kind of euphoric. I don't know if euphoric is the right word, but euphoric. And we actually ended up performing with the KSO, which is like the Kingston Symphony, right? I think so. Yeah, the Kingston <laughs> Symphony. Um, and uh, they, what we ended up performing was uh, Carmina Burana by Carl Orff. I think it's Orff, yeah great oh my god it was fan freaking tabulous i had such a great time singing soprano one being like <laughs> like screaming the whole time um but it was a good time great experience i said that already but i'll never forget standing in the isabel specifically the concert hall for the first time and mm. singing with the symphony and feeling the lights on my face and not really knowing where to look because the hall is so large. Um, yeah, I was just a baby then. It was a good time. <laughs> <laughs> nice. All right, well, I'm gonna switch things up here slightly with a theater memory instead of all this wonderful music stuff. Uh, Cause my favorite memory that I wanna throw back to is DSS, which is the first show that I did at Queens. It's the first theater company that I worked with and is a fantastic company to start off with when you are a slightly confused first year who is not really sure how to navigate the list of different theater companies or different opportunities that are at Queens. DSS is a lot of fun. It's a little chaotic, not gonna lie to you. It's generally four short student written plays, all written, directed, produced, entirely created by students. It is a fantastic way to meet people. I know I let I met a bunch of great friends there and people who I'm still decently close with. And it's a really great way to just get connected with a lot of different people throughout drama because everybody kind of does DSS at some point if you're in the Queens Theatre community. So it brings together a lot of different people, which is a really great time. Also, as a side note, I believe DSS is actually doing their hiring for the fall in the next couple of months. Uh, I know they're just finishing up creator hiring right now for scripts. And then I believe in the next few weeks, they'll be moving into director and production hiring. So keep your eyes out for that. Or if you're looking to act, I suspect that kind of information will be coming out in September. So keep your eyes peeled for that because it's a good time. Yeah. Um, Hamish, have you ever been in the Isabel Concert Hall? I've been in the Isabel Concert Hall once. It was for a film class. It was not for anything dance school related, but I have technically been in there. <laughs> oh my gosh. It's so beautiful. I think one time before a wind concert, I, I got to be by myself on the stage, the only person playing because I was like half an hour early for the warm up. Um, it just makes anything sound beautiful that you play in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't know. That's all I wanted to say about the concert hall just sarah squawking by herself on stage <laughs> with her flute yeah like a horrible first year tone oh my gosh just on the topic of talking about our facilities at queens the isabel is actually one of our like really nice uh opportunities that we're able to or venues that we're able to connect to uh, through the dance school. The dance school in particular is made up of drama and music as well as map um, and musical theater. So four different studies and that all, oh, and COCA, sorry, <laughs> and COCA, um, that are all connected. And we reside within certain buildings such as HLH, which is Harrison Lacan. Um, supposed to look like a piano, Questionable. Debatable. Debatable. <laughs> vaguely memories of a piano. It's yeah. piano adjacent. <laughs> yeah. 
Um, there's also Theological Hall that is very different from <laughs> HLH. Uh, it's kind of like a small little castle, but not really a castle. Um, I like to think it's a castle. It uh, has like a couple of uh, different performance spaces within it. Uh, Hamish, there's the Rotunda. And what's the other one? Uh, so the main ones in Theo are the Rotunda and then Con Hall, as it's called, which is the newer of the two little more of a traditional space whereas the rotunda is basically just a large semicircle of a room that you can kind of reconfigure into an audience as needed theo generally just as a word of advice to everyone it is a labyrinth you will get lost this is part of being a student in the dance school that's just what happens it's a rite of passage exactly Yeah, and like uh, the Isabel, I forgot to mention, there's also the rehearsal hall, which is just as beautiful as the actual hall, like the main concert hall itself. I don't know, maybe I'm biased because the choral has their on- like rehearsals in there as well as I think the other ensembles do as well, eh? Yeah, it's just really nice. You get to oversee uh, Lake Ontario with the like giant glass windows. Really nice. Great acoustics. It's um, totally less- nice acoustics and nice views way the isabel also has the black box theater which is where a lot of the theater shows that i've been part of and a lot of theater shows of queens generally tend to go up it is exactly what it sounds like it is a large dark room that is extremely reconfigurable and is actually a really nice space to perform in because you can pretty much just turn it into whatever you need it to be Mm -hmm. There are also some really nice study spaces at the Isabel. Um, when you go in, there's a great big lobby with like floor to ceiling windows, again, overlooking beautiful Lake Ontario with lots of tables and chairs. Um, mm. If you go up to, I think, I believe it's the third floor, there's also another little lounge lobby up there um, with some more, some comfier couches and more tables that also has a balcony also overlooking Lake Ontario. So it's a really nice place to, you know, sit down and just bring your laptop or whatever else you need to study and just sit and be comforted by the the lapping of the lake against the shore, I suppose. Um, the drawback of the Isabel is that it's super nice, very pretty, uh, but it is like 15 minutes from main campus. It always took me 15 minutes to walk from Harrison Lacane Hall, HLH, to the Isabel. Um, and the tent center beside it. Oh, can we talk about the tent center? Oh, yeah. Talking about labyrinths. Oh my gosh. Um, actually the tent center has a cool music lending library. I've never used it, but one of my friends has used it and she was like, it's pretty good. Um, but you have to have lived in Kingston for a year. Otherwise they won't lend you any instruments. Um, but they also have a beautiful cafe there they have really nice sandwiches um yeah it's a little pricey just gonna warn you now but they do have delicious sandwiches and the coffee's pretty good too and we love supporting local business yes yes (laughs) i was gonna talk about mac Corey. i know that's on campus but um, no we can dive in there and then kind of shoot off from there yeah i think the cafeteria in Matt Corey is awesome. I used to always go Pita Pal Monday right before Wind Ensemble. That's what we called it. And we'd get Pita Pit um, because in first year, I used my Tams for everything. Um, and now I don't have Tams anymore. So I actually have to pay actual money. Like, what is that? <laughs> um, In terms of paying actual money for food on campus, as somebody who was a first year not in residence or a finer, as you would call it, uh, something that I struggled with was, you know, you go to places, you want to get food. Um, some places don't take your debit card or cash. Some p- places only take your student <laughs> card. But for those of us without meal plans, um, if you just do a quick Google, um, you can Google something called Flex Balance. Um, mine comes up right away, but you might have to add Queens. And you can put money from your debit card on your student card. Um, make sure it's Flex bal- and flex Dollars, not Tricolor Dollars, because Tricolor Dollars... Uh, don't work anywhere except for the library, I think. But you can add flex dollars, and it'll they'll just swipe it and take money off of it. It's great. Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, gotta love the flex. Um... Also, just talking about good places that are in the arc. Uh, I am a large fan of Kogro, 
mm-hmm. or also known as common grounds is what it is actually called although i don't think i've ever heard anybody refer to it in passing as anything other than cogro but it's a coffee shop it's on the second floor of the arc which is the big athletics building where the gym is for those of you coming to the school and it's a lovely space they've got a lot of tables which can sometimes be kind of hard to find a seat at we'll see if that changes this year but it's a really nice space they've got big windows so there's lots of light uh the whole coffee shop itself is all student run it's i believe one of the ams businesses and so it's a good place to meet people it's a good place to get some work done it's a good place just to spend 20 minutes between classes if you need somewhere to go and you want to break from being in the libraries or being in all the class buildings it's mm-hmm. a solid spot go check it out and um Sorry, just another note on Kogro. They are all about um, sustainable, um, like, food service. I don't know if that's a thing, but um, if you eat there, they'll give you, like, ceramic mugs to that they will then wash after. And all their, like, takeout packaging is, like, compostable. So that's pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And if you need to get your sugar fix, they have a mean uh, red velvet cake. Like, yeah. the best Honestly, red just velvet all cake. the cakes from Kogro. Yeah. Fire. <laughs> they are, the Kogro cakes are great. Well, this um, is slightly deviation from the food theme so far. But I know, especially when you're, if you're either first getting to Queens or if you're just getting back here in the summer, uh, the pier is a really nice swimming spot. It's down by kind of the south. Which direction is that? southeast i want to say or it might be southwest it's down by one the southern part of campus by the water southwest thank you uh and it's basically just a little pier sticking out into the lake but it's a really nice spot to go chill in the sun it's a lovely spot to go swimming it's a very nice summer hangout kind of area it tends to be a big student gathering spot and so if you're looking for a crowd of people or if you just want to cool off for a bit especially if you end up in a res with no air conditioning, because I know (laughs) that happened to me during my first week here and it was so hot. (laughs) So it is a nice spot to know about. So speaking about being a first year living on campus, I know Hannah said that she was a finer, uh, but Hamish, Sarah, and I are all, we all lived in res in first year. Uh, in particular, I lived in Watts and I had a meal plan and my meal plan, I guess it's just a standard meal plan. And as Sarah was mentioning earlier, uh, we get these things called TAMs. There's two types of TAMs that we discuss, I guess, in Queens. Uh, your like TAMing ceremony is when you get like your little hat. I think I have my hat. Hold a second. Hold a second. Here is my <laughs> TAM um oh i actually put it on really cutely i don't know how i did that <laughs> but yes um and each tam has like a different pom-pom color so mine is art sci um sarah's had a yellow one there that's con ed right sarah um actually the yellow one is engineering and it oh. was my mom's because mm. way back in the 80s she went to queens for engineering solid <laughs> <laughs> Um, but yeah, back to the TAM. So this is a TAM. And then we, as Sarah mentioned earlier, we use the term TAM to also pay for food and things, uh, and flex dollars, like Hannah mentioned, those are all like, well, flex dollars, you can like pay, like Hannah said to your, your card, but, uh, it's also like students are allotted so many flex dollars with their meal plan as well. And essentially with TAMs, the meal plan TAMs, is that you can go to Matt Corey, you can get a food, get food with your TAM, or uh, you go to Loco. Loco is like, it, it's also nearby. Location 21. Yeah, also called Location 21, yes. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, different things. Like all, all the, essentially all the food places on campus that are not, uh, what's the word? like an actual cafeteria, you can use TAMs there. I don't think you can use it at Kogro though. I don't know. I know they've changed the rules on that a little bit in the last couple of years, but I don't think you can. But basically anywhere that's not specifically one of the little like independent or student run businesses that's on campus. So most of the food places on campus, 
will take TAMs. And basically what that means is you can use one of your meals for the day, or I think it's up to four you can yeah. use. Four, yeah. To get certain combinations of meals from those food places. It's a good way if you want to break up cafeteria food or if you want to get food, but you're not able to make it to the hours that the cafeterias are open. I know I ran into that a lot, especially around dinner time in first year, because I'd always have rehearsal during when the calf was open. Mm-hmm. So they're a good way to find other sources of food on campus. Yeah, another one I missed is actually Lazy. Lazy is iconic, the Lazy Scholar. Um, they are actually the located. Call. Yeah, Vic Hall, located there. There's a couple other places. You can also use your TAMs at the uh, the sports center, the ARC, at the ARC. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, you can use it at Tim Hortons, Pita Pit, like Sarah mentioned before, uh, many other places. So yeah, those are what TAMs are. This is what a TAM is too. Uh, and TAMs is just kind of part of like the traditions at Queens to being, yeah, Cha Gale. Uh, <laughs> so really quickly back to uh, the res. I had the privilege of living in a single plus uh, Watts. I personally stand by it being the best res. I had air conditioning, so suck it, Hamish. Like the new ones. You got the nice res. You got one of the hotel reses. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, I will say, as somebody who did not live in residence, I have I have two points on that. The first is not to go back to the meal plan thing again, um, but your friends that have meal plans have these things called guest passes, and it gets you into the dining halls for $5, I think, um, but they only have five of them. So just use them wisely and also like don't beg your friends to take you to the cafeteria. My friends were just really nice. Um, additionally, being not in residence means you save a lot of money. And I mean, it helps. Like I'm from Kingston. I was born in Kingston. Um, so I just kind of got to stay at home for another year. And I, it was kind of awesome. It was kind of awesome to just like not have to worry about being a totally real adult away from home in my first year of university. Because a lot of kind of stressful things can happen. Uh, and it's stressful for some people to just leave and be on their own for the first time. So it's not a bad option. And also I do believe that finers can go to their own orientation week. Um, but yeah, they like have I said, I didn't go. Mm. Um, but really, Hamish, what res did you live in? I lived in Gordbrock, which is, let's call it, let's call it the fun residence. It's, <laughs> uh, it's a little old. It's a little out of shape. There's probably more asbestos kicking around in there than there should be, but that's fine. Uh, Generally, it's a fun time. I know I live all with people that I met in my first year living in res, so it is a good way to meet people. Mm -hmm. And it's a good way to, if this is your thing, bridge from living with your family and living entirely on your own or entirely independently just because there are still dons around there are still staff people around that you can turn to for help there's always gonna be other people around that you can ask stuff of as opposed to living on your own which can also be really fun but also can mean if you're not from Kingston if you're just renting a place you're jumping right in so res can be a nice way to bridge that gap and a don is really quick a don is uh if you've ever heard of any other university talking about an RA, it's essentially the same thing. They're just like a, a, a res supervisor who is an older student. Yeah, and they get, they like live on your floor with you. So there's one on every floor. Something that not a lot of people talk about is, you know, when you live not in residence, um, you don't spend as much time with other people in your program um as you know uh, everyone else is so it can you like I was pretty shy in first year you I found it kind of hard to make I found it kind of hard to make friends because I wasn't doing anything and I wasn't going anywhere and doing anything with anybody and I didn't go to orientation week so I like definitely recommend going to just about anything that you can any event that you can muster the courage to go to um because it will help you make friends and I think that would have really improved my experience in the first couple weeks of school but good things to know about as you're coming into first year or as you're in upper years. A uh, couple of good spots on campus to know about, especially if you're in the dance school. My particular favorite is the Theo Green Room, which is a room in the basement of Theological Hall. It is where a lot of drama people tend to gather. It is called the Green Room, but it is very orange. Just going to let you know that now. 
it's just we, just keep calling it that don't worry about it uh but there's a bunch of couches down there there's a table technically it's a place to do work really it's a place to hang out with other drama people and other theater people because rarely does anybody get any work done sitting down there but it's a good spot to hang out i know because i am not a music person and i know the rest of you are hlh the lobby tends to be kind of the gathering spot yeah Mm -hmm. yeah 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 I feel like there some people do work. I think the higher up in the lobby you sit, it is sort of understood like the more work you're trying to get done because there's one on the third floor and there's one um it's sort of a lobby um on the second floor and then there's also the main lobby situation on the first floor. Um but the first floor is usually filled with people um just kind of hanging out, shooting the breeze and it's a lot of fun. But it depends if you're sitting like on the couches in the main floor or where the benches uh, and tables are. I usually sit where the benches are because there's no space on the couch for me. Um, make space. You need to insert yeah. yourself and make space. Okay. Yeah, I'll just like, like, oh, sorry. Can I just like sit here? Scoot. Hey, everybody. I'm just going to sit right down in between all, all, all you guys. <laughs> yeah. See, um, the great thing about the green room with Theo is that we took the couches from HLH, so now they have less of them, and we have them. We're still upset about and that. And you're never getting them back, ever. They are Finish. ours. Why did you bring that up? You're going to fuel some fires that you're don't need to be fueled some, right now. You're opening <laughs> some old wounds. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. Never. <laughs> the third floor. Yeah, just now that we're talking about some of the dance school stuff as well, uh, a little bit more about what the programs are, because I know... If you were listening early, you may have heard us throwing around names like Map, names like Coca, and be like, what is that? So there's a few different programs that are situated under the umbrella of the dance school, of the kind of performance stuff overall. The main ones are drama and music. Beyond that, there's Map, which is media and performance production, which is a shared program between film and drama and music. There's also COCA, which is Computing and the Creative Arts, which is similar idea, but for computing. Uh, and then there is Music Theater, which is a combined program with Queens and St. Lawrence College and specifically focuses on music theater training. Yeah. Sorry, I kind of zoned out for a minute there. Um, do we want to talk about some of the courses um i think i would like to start off with lessons slash studio um because i love my music people out there um lessons and studio are kind of the same course um so it's only going to show up as one hour on your timetable but it's actually going to be um at least two hours of in course time if you're in the um flute studio it's going to be three hours because we have um an additional studio time but i don't need to talk about that um so what is studio studio is when you're going to play for your peers um we're divided into a few different groups there's um the voiced students perform for the voice students the woodwind students perform for the woodwind students and brass and percussion are together after that there is piano studio and string studio um and they all happen in hlh because that's the music building and actually something i did in first year i don't know if you guys did it but you can go to other studios studios and just watch you don't you don't have to give feedback, but generally in your own studio, you give feedback on whoever is performing that day. Um, but like I went to string studio to support my friends who were in string studio. Um, I know a couple times my string friends came to Woodwind studio to support me. Um, I would have gone to like vo vocal voice studio but it was at the same time as woodwind studio so i could never go um and yeah does anybody want to talk about the lessons portion of studio i've been talking a lot so 
jump in about lessons uh basically um if you're not in performance um which if you are you're very lucky and very talented um but if you're not in performance uh you'll get just an hour of private instruction a week with your instructor um and you they uh most people i believe have taken probably taken some form of private lessons but it's just you get an hour of one-on-one -on -one time with your professor um every week uh it's it's very very helpful they'll help you pick music they'll help you figure out what you need to get better at um just the general concept of lessons i guess um yeah i don't have too much more to say about it i guess yeah um i do want to jump in because you mentioned performance um so as a person who is doing a performance audition this year i'll just explain quickly what it's about um, essentially, you have to do an audition in September, um, and what, what performance is, is you get an hour and a half lessons, um, and you're also expected to do a recital at the end of every year. Um, how you get into performance is, in addition to your audition, before that, um, you had to get an A on your previous um, musical examination at the end of the year, um, or if you're in first year, um, and your audition to Queens was really good, uh, they'll ask you to do a performance audition if you are that, <laughs> that amazing, um, and, and then, I don't know, you get it, it's based off of your audition to the school in itself. Um, Hamish, is there like a similar drama course? No, is the fun <laughs> part of this. So drama and music, while they are connected course-wise and degree-wise, they tend to be set up a little differently. I know just as a heads up for everyone, uh, the exact setup, especially at the upper year levels of those degrees, is a little under change right now. And the art side webpage is slightly out of date on that. It is being worked on being fixed. I know the drama faculty is doing a lot of work on getting that up to date, but it's not quite there yet, especially on the arts end. So just as a note of caution for everyone, as far as specific courses go, drama tends to kind of be grouped around. There's one course that you take if you want to do drama stuff in first year, Drama 100. It's a good time. It's fairly general, but it's a mixture of theory stuff in lectures and then practical labs that you do where you get to create a small performance out of the text of a couple of other plays and you perform that a few times over the year for the other people in that class from there as you head into the upper years there's generally like a core theory history course that you have to take 200 and then 300 which are just your kind of like okay here's theater over time here are some things you need to know beyond that a lot of the more practical stuff, a lot of the stuff that would be like that studio course or those lessons tends to be either through specific courses that you can choose to take, or if you're looking to do lots of practical stuff, which I'm guessing a lot of you are, and a lot of people tend to, that tends to be through more productions. So instead of doing courses, what you'll end up doing are a lot of extracurricular or semi-extracurricular productions. You can get some credit for them in second year and there are two courses that you have to take, which basically require you just to be part of a production team for a show for the department. And those are generally a good experience. They're at least a good way to just learn, okay, what are the hands-on parts of actually building a show? What's it like to be on Carpenter? If you're like me, what's it like to be on the props team for a show? What kind of stuff do you have to do to put that together? But generally, how you end up doing the practical work on the drama side is apply for shows, apply to be part of shows. There are, I don't know that they're doing a major in the fall this year, but on a normal year, the department runs a major production in the fall and a major production in the winter. As Serena's shaking her head, I believe it's just the major production in the winter this year. We love pandemics. Uh, beyond that, DSS, like I mentioned before, is a good way to get involved in some smaller productions, and that one reliably runs. And then there's about 
I don't know, 10 or 12 different student theater companies that run on and around campus that do productions either annually or one per term. And those are also really great. Sarah's showing off a player's shirt over here, I believe. Players is a fun time. In fact, Sarah, if you want to jump in and tell us a little bit about it. Um, Queen's Players is 19 plus. Uh, you have to be over 19 because um, although uh, substances aren't required, they're heavily encouraged. Um, and yeah, um, I was just in the band. Um, I'm doing it again this summer, but... Yeah, there's a lot of, like, cast and... Oh, right. It's, like, stand-up comedy, and there's also a singing bit. It's not really stand-up comedy. They do have a script, but basically they write it based off of, like, their improv bits in rehearsal. I think that's how it goes. Um, yeah, that's it for my Queen's Player. Oh, all the money that they raise from their shows goes to various local charities of the Kingston community. So if you aren't in the show, maybe you should consider going to see the show. Um, if it's online, which it is this summer, it's going to be, um, you can be any age, it's all ages, but uh, when their shows are in person, it is 19 plus because they do um, put them on at the mansion, which is a local bar, bar, and bar, bar pub combo thing. Yeah, um, there's also like volleyball in the background, like mm -hmm. in, in the sand. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it's it's very great. Yeah, it's a great place. Um, yeah, they they usually, um, if you aren't there to see a Queens Players show, they usually just have some live music too. Um, anyways. I was going to say two things, but I forget what. Oh, one was for lessons. You don't have to be a music student to do lessons. Um, it's just a course. Um, and uh, yeah, you just have to contact, I guess, music people about it. And two, do we want to talk about first year history because the music oh noelle is putting in the chat i don't i'm not sure if you have to oh we do have to audition for lessons always but it's not that big of a deal if you're worried about it don't be worried about it um just reach out to the prof and they're pretty nice yeah serena you had a hand yeah, I think it's also based on prof availability, uh, at least in the voice studio, we have like five profs and uh, for example, my prof, her name's Diane, she is wonderful, uh, but she has the most students, she's always busy, so it's kind of like who is available. Uh, just really quickly to switch gears really fast. Uh, one thing that we do have at HLH is uh, we book rooms uh, and actually not just HLH, but in general with our different rooms, you can book, um, I think you can book the rehearsal hall. You can book all the rooms pretty much in uh, uh, HLH. You can book them in Theo. Um, I'm not sure if you can book any other rooms, but essentially from other buildings, sorry, but those are like essentially the buildings that you can book rooms from. There are practice rooms that you can book in the basement, which is uh, really important when it comes around to uh, winter term, getting closer to juries, etc. because those rooms are packed, always busy. Yeah. Um, another thing is really quickly, Hamish mentioned it, is like uh, majors. Mm. So that's like a dance school affiliated thing. We also do with majors, uh, there's like the end of year uh, launch, I think, like season yeah. launch where they like talk hype and hype, hype up the following year of like all the things that are going to happen and different majors that are going to happen and who the directors are. That's a good time. Um, in music in particular, we perform each semester, right? There's a, yeah. And it's very different for each ensemble. 
but essentially they'll be performing it, uh, and the ensemble performs once each semester. And uh, at least for the like conjoined ones that we have, like one is around Hoko generally. Hoko is homecoming. Uh, it's a big like queen celebration, also a Chagale uh, history celebration thing. Um, that is the homecoming concert. After that, lots of times the profs and the students will go to a, to Megalos uh, or another bar, restaurant, such thing. Megalos is unfortunately closed. Did you say, didn't it close down? They did close down and it's very unfortunate. I hope that maybe they can come back, but... The Rustic Spud is there now and that moved oh. up from uh, somewhere on William Street, I think. Um, but uh, like Megalos closing sucks. Yeah, it really does because that's like a long history. You know, it's like kind of part of a tradition that we have as music students in particular. Um, I don't know if there's anything else. Um, Is there anything, <laughs> any other events particular to the dance school that's run by the dance school? Run by the dance school, but there are year events which uh, DSA runs. Yeah, yeah. yeah. If you're going to apply to be a year rep um you are the person who gets to choose what those events are when they are like everything to do with that um i was a year rep for my first two years here at queens and it was awesome making events um one time i tried to get everyone to watch a movie um but we all decided that we were going to talk over each other instead for <laughs> like three hours um which was cool and I felt so powerful because I booked the lecture halls <laughs> in HLH um and you just go to the office and you say hey I booked the I booked the lecture hall can I have the key and they give you the key oh and um after one of these year events, at the year event, we decided we were going to prank our theory professor in the morning. So because I had the key to the lecture hall, we could all get into the lecture hall about half an hour before class started. Um, and we all just like hid inside the lecture hall with the lights off. Um, and so when he showed up and there was no one waiting outside to be let in, he was like, what? And then he opened the door and we were all just sitting in the lecture hall in the dark waiting for him. <laughs> Was that Burge? Yeah. Um, Did you scare him? Yeah. And then like Amazing. later in the year, m the entire year pranked Dr. Burge and me. They did the same prank and they all pranked me and I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> I will say Dr. Burge, I think, is on a sabbatical this year. So he would he normally is. be the, the person next... who teaches first year theory. Um, for the next two years, I think. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. um, speaking of year events, I was also a year rep uh, in my second year um, with a friend of mine. And we planned a we planned a Mozart scavenger hunt on Mozart's birthday. And we uh, one of our other friends came dressed up as Mozart um for this wonderful event and we had it with i believe we had it with the first years um and everyone went around and they all did the scavenger hunt and we met back in one of the lecture halls and we watched the mozart movie amadeus and we had birthday cake it was a lot of fun it was a, one of one of the greatest accomplishments i think i we can ever talk about <laughs> yeah um can i just jump in really quick as the student affairs uh, uh vice president i want to talk about desus and desus events uh, so we haven't finalized any of our events yet due to the COVID situation, um, but campus is hoping to be back 100% in person in September and then events should be allowed to start happening come October. Um, right now we're thinking about doing a welcome back barbecue, which is something we do every year, uh, a lawn movie night, so kind of allowing for uh, social distancing. Um, there's a couple of other things. I, I really hope we can do a haunted house. I think a haunted, really house wants to do a haunted house. I would so be... badly want us to do a haunted house. I don't know if we can yes. do it. That would be so, so awesome. badly want it to happen. Wouldn't it? Like, right. It would be so good. I, I'm so ready for it. Um, generally DSS does merch where you can get student bars, our jacket bars, actually, that what is what they're called. Um, and there are also 
with bars, you can do different challenges, which I think Sarah had briefly mentioned earlier. Uh, <laughs> there are- we can't talk like, about what all of those are on this podcast, but- uh, Yeah, there's a wiki yeah. if you want to look up Queen's Jacket bars. Yeah, it's the shenanigan bars. Mm-hmm. Uh, those ones are like really fun. There's one called the Wizard Staff. Look it up. Just don't hurt yourself. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) There is uh, obviously like school related bars, specifically if you take Mm -hmm. John Birch's um, theory 191, you can get the glorious bar because this man always says glorious like that. I think it should be called awful and I can't disclose what awful stands for. um, All wrong beep. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, all wrong, effed up leading leading notes, which I'm sure everyone will find out more uh, about in Theory 191. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, so yeah, jack bars are really great. Um, yeah, and then I, just to mention really quick, because I don't want to go too far on the events because they're not finalized yet, but those are some little hype things. Um, also with... Uh, DSIS. We have these student initiatives uh, that are connected to DSIS, such as DSS, which Hamish has spoken about already. It calls stands for the Dance Studio Series. We have Cues Me, which is the education sort of side. It's, Cues Me is not a production company, but more of like an educational thing, right? Do, um, it's, uh, it stands for, what does it stand for? Queen's University Student Queen's University Student Music Educators Association is, I believe, what it stands for. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so they're all about um, music education and, like, you know, advocating for that. Mm -hmm. I think there's a portion of it where if you volunteer with them, you can do student outreach stuff and you can, like, uh, help high school students learn music as a volunteer of your time or um like it's a part of DSUS it's a part of our student government so you can totally get involved with that if you're passionate about musical education Mm -hmm. um the other two initiatives that are uh in the works at the moment are SAS I think is how you say it. it it's the student artist series Uh, It's supposed to mimic previous faculty artist series. It's a little bit more of a serious, uh, maybe serious is not the right word, like a professional setting for for students to perform and get performance practice. Um, Another thing is actually something I'm starting up called DSO, which is the Dan Studio Opera. And essentially it's not just opera, but I like the name opera, I think, and I want to prioritize opera because we have not enough uh, opportunities here at Queens for classical voice music. Mm -hmm. Um, But opportunities. (laughs) Opportunities, yes. (laughs) And uh, it also is open to student work. So whether or not you've written a musical scene or a musical and you want to showcase that, it allows for uh contemporary musicals to be put on as well if you ever have the director bugging you and want to try that out dso is for you to try your hand um yeah and final plug as well to throw in while we're on that segment uh desus if you want to get involved with us is going to be hiring for our public affairs team in august and then hiring a couple first year specific positions in september so if you want to be part of the newsletter, Sarah, if you want to talk about that, or if you want to be part of just the public affairs team more generally, come check that out. It's a fun time. Um, yeah, so as one half of the public affairs, I guess you could call them team leads, uh, please apply. We're putting out, um, we're hiring for some photographers, some graphic designers. Uh, we're hiring for somebody to help us with the video production for a YouTube channel. Um, we're also going to be hiring for people to write stuff for the newsletter. Um, yeah, so please apply. Um, if you have any questions about that, you can just reach out to anybody on DSUS that you know. 
Um, and, you know, if it's not the right person, they'll direct you to who the right person is. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, just to jump on that also yeah. if you like this podcast hit like and subscribe well actually I don't know if we're on YouTube right now but essentially hit like and sub- subscribe and you can be a part of this podcast as well uh, Hannah mm-hmm. is our actual student representative uh, for this episode of the Desis Talks um, and also once again as a reminder first year elections will be happening mid-september first year and uh upper year rep elections sorry vote yeah. hannah for fourth year representative in music <laughs> thank you very much i think a a good way just to know what's going on with the dance school undergraduate society and basically any other student run companies or anything is to go on instagram facebook um we have a tiktok too if you guys are into tiktok go to at queens desas um but definitely definitely check out our social medias and we are also launching our website this year so does anybody know what the website like what the so the website is coming soon it's not quite finished yet but it will be up very soon uh it is i believe www.dansock.com so once that is out in the next couple of weeks come check that out that'll have a lot of really helpful information for you all yeah um woohoo that's it <laughs> if you've got any further questions you're also welcome to email us which i know is a bit old-fashioned but it's a decent way of getting in contact the email for that is desis at queensu.ca. Mm-hmm. Um, I will say in case anyone's looking for those handles, the Instagram handle is at Dan School U Grad Society. Um, and for Facebook, we are the Dan School Undergraduate Society. And I believe Sarah already said our TikTok handle. Queens Desis. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Well, any final comments? No, uh, I think that's everything from all of us today. Thank you all very much for listening. Thanks. Signing off. Thesis talks. Bye. Bye.